Hi, Les from Thailand here from Retired and Living the Dream. Today's video is going to be about bankruptcy, how I dealt with and cope with actually going through bankruptcy. Um, the reason for this video today is there are many people going through some hard parts of their life at the minute with what's been going on for the past two years. Many people have lost their job, many people are in debt. And I was watching a news program yesterday and this news program made me a little bit angry about the the sheer arrogance some of these wealthy people have about home ownership and things like that. Um, it was Kirsty Allsop who made the comment that when she was 21 she bought a house for £11,500. Now, what she didn't mention that she came from a wealthy family and I'm sure her parents helped her get a foothold on the property ladder. I've had this problem. Big problem. I really, really needed a good life coach. And I kept searching and searching. Ah, there are so many choices. It's really hard to find one that has all the things on my list. But I finally did it. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. If you are looking for one as well, look no further. Here's a really good one. Just use mine. Use mine. I'm very satisfied. Definitely recommend. Problem gone. Thank you. used to be three or four times your annual salary is the house that you could afford to buy and now wages haven't kept up with inflation over the past 20 or 30 years the house prices in regard to your salary every year is a lot more than four times your annual salary now so it puts house buying out of most people's reach now with the fact that you have to save up for a big deposit to be able to buy a house now when I first bought my house back Oh, a long, long, long time ago. You could get a 105% mortgage. They were actually bending over backwards to lend you money. And 105% of the mortgage paid your solicitor's bills as well. That's how easy it was back in my days. And yeah, I've had several houses and I bought several houses. And, and then I went through bankruptcy. Now, th this video's on about just one of the things which is bank I went through bankruptcy, divorces, lost everything and I've crawled my way back up to where I am today. Some people say I'm, I'm a bit too personal with my um, talk about my life experiences of what's happened with the divorce etc etc. Now the reason why I do this is because I've drawn my experience to help those others that are actually going through this hard time because when you're going through this hard time and it's only those people who've been through this situation fully understand what I'm about to say is that your problems are the worst problems in the world. Nobody else has had worse problems than what you've got at that moment. I had a couple of very, very, very good friends who helped me all through this situation and this is what gets people through is that help of your friends to be able to help you through this situation but none of my friends had been through this situation bankruptcy or losing everything that they ever worked for it's a very very hard thing to do so bankruptcy and um, as i say watch my other videos on my divorces i've been divorced three times i've been married four times so my life experience is, is vast and wide and i talk about everything on my channel with regard to um, moving on with life. Everybody goes through a hard time, but there's easy and better times ahead. Now again, so doing this video, if it helps somebody along, then I'm more than happy that it helps somebody, or if it sends somebody in a different direction, then fantastic. Because several of my friends, who were also going through financial problems and divorces or whatever, sadly took their own lives because of the, the situation that they were in. Now for me, suicide is a permanent solution to a temporary problem. Any problems that you've got financially, divorce or whatever, you can move through these problems. It's difficult, it's not easy, and you need the guidance and support of many, many other people to get you through this. It's never, never easy. So my bankruptcy. I went from owning three houses, just about to buy my fourth house, and um, I was working seven days a week. I had four businesses altogether. I was a firefighter. I was an electrician. I had my own children's entertainment business and I had uh, some properties. So I was just working seven days a week all the time. 
my wife didn't work because I worked, so she didn't have to work, so she looked after the kids. So I did everything in my mind. In my mind, I was the sort of perfect catch for a, for a wife to have because hardworking, honest, reliable. But unfortunately, I'm not going to go to the reasons why we got divorced, but we got divorced and going through divorce um, for the settlement, because I had the four jobs and I was earning quite a lot of money, although we had a lot of debt with this money, and um, because I was just building up for our futures. Uh, so I worked hard and I got well paid for it. But the court wanted to take this into account and assess my monthly maintenance payments for my wife and children. Now, I never had a problem with paying maintenance to my wife and children, but the amount of money that they were asking was based on the amount of money that I was earning when I was working seven days a week. So I said no, and I packed in all my jobs, all my secondary jobs, my businesses, everything, and I just remained a firefighter. Well, because we had three houses, the mortgage needed paying, the interest rates had shot up to 15% at the time. So yeah, we were struggling a little bit, but it wasn't overwhelmingly. Um, so we decided that because all my businesses closed down, I didn't have the money to maintain the mortgages for the other properties. I sold my businesses and concentrated on the divorce. So once we got through the divorce proceedings and everything was was uh, sorted, I, I looked at the bigger picture because I could retire in eight years after my divorce. So I looked at the bigger picture that I wanted to maintain my pension and I didn't want to lose that to my wife so I could go and do the things that I wanted to do. So for those people who were going through a similar, look at the bigger picture. Don't look at what you can get now, look at what you can have in eight or ten years time because your life will change in that moment. So I ended up with all of my wife's debts because uh, my wife wasn't working so therefore them debts became my debts because she had no way to maintain or pay them debts and it sort of became a, a, a laughable thing that my deposits that I put down on the house oh no that, that, that's not taken into account because that's a joint but the debts were always my debt. So I got loaded with everything. Um, so my wife was totally debt free when we got divorced and I took on all, all the debts. I had threatening letters. I had letters saying I'm gonna take her to court. I had my car repossessed. Um, I was going through a very, very difficult time. And it was my sort of financial advisor from the Citizen Advice, which is a free organisation which which helps people out with debts and one thing and another. It was her who suggested that I went bankrupt because she said, Les, you've got nothing at all now. She said, you've got no no savings, you've, you've got no assets. Um, and at the time it was, it was 18,000 pounds, which was my, the amount of money that I owed. So 18,000 pounds in today's rate really isn't an awful lot of money. Yeah, when I got divorced 20 years ago, it was a lot of money. So this is the 20 years ago since I was bankrupt. And I remember it as if it was like yesterday. So, so begrudgingly I said, yes, okay, let's go through the, the bankruptcy situation. So we goes to court and ironically, it was the same judge that stamped our divorce looked at me and he did a double look because he could recognize because it was only two weeks ago since he seen me and he asked me are you sure this is what you want to do you want to go through bankruptcy and i said yes i do that's what i want to do so i went bankrupt and he stamped the form and that day i went home and i cried because i didn't think i'd ever ever be in this situation i was always a hard working person paid my dues lived by the law did everything correct and now here i am bankrupt. So yes, it severely hit home on the day I was declared bankrupt. But a week or so later I, I got a letter from the insolvency agent to go and have a talk with how we're going to deal with this because we're going through a bankruptcy you've got to give them the information on what you're earning, how much your disposable income because even though you're bankrupt you're still expected to pay something off towards your bankruptcy if you've got enough money to be able to do that. Well, my financial advisor through the citizen advice was very good and 
it ended up so I didn't have to pay anything towards my bankruptcy because I just had enough money to live on with the price of maintenance and finding a new accommodation, blah, 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 it just goes on. So I was lucky in that respect. But if I took on any second jobs, any, uh, like if I started my business up again, then I would have had to make contributions towards my bankruptcy. So for the two years that the bankruptcy happened, I didn't do any of the work apart from being a firefighter at all. So again, I went to the insolvency office and again, feeling embarrassed and shy about all of this, like, because this for me should never have happened, but it did. And it was a young girl that was dealing with it. And she just looked me in the eye. She said, Les, she said, I can see you're upset over this. But she said, listen, don't be that upset. She said, you are one of 21,700 people who've gone bankrupt this year in the UK. 21,700 people that year, and we were only in July, went bankrupt that year. So it was nothing sort of to be happy about, but thinking I was the only person in the world at that time that was going through the hard time, but to have the feeling that 21, over 21,000 other people were going through the same situation as me sort of give me a little bit of hope. So she gave me some ideas on what I could do. You lose your bank account, you only get a very, very basic bank account. So, and the only things you could have paid into your bank account was your salary and that's it. And it was like a savings book. You're going, you, you weren't allowed a checkbook, obviously no credit cards, things like that. Um, but the, the threatening letters stop. You don't get any more of them. And if you did get any more threatening letters, the insolvency agency would write a letter to them and tell them um, not to bother you anymore because you've gone bankrupt and they've lost whatever money they, they were owed. And if they continue to send letters to you, then they're in breach of, of the contract and they could be fined for sending you letters demanding money that you've already sorted out because you've gone through bankruptcy. Now, bankruptcy isn't easy. You, you don't have any credit, you can't get a loan. Um, but one big lesson it taught me that I can live without credit. And that's what you did. You, you manage with the money that you've got. And because I wasn't paying any of my creditors anymore, I had a little bit more disposable income. So I bought a car within, within two or three weeks of going bankrupt. I bought a 500 pound car because it was a go, go to work on me push bike because you know, my car was repossessed. So a 500 pound car, for me, it was just like having a brand new car again because I had transport. And that just opened more doors because then you had your mobility. And slowly but surely, you get your life back together. It's a long two years which my bankruptcy lasted. But after two years, my bankruptcy was over and done with. And then you could, that's the real time that you can start your your life back over again because then I restarted my electrical business and I started earning a little bit more money. Uh, I had a new relationship that I was in and things sort of get better as the weeks and the months and the years go by. But basically it's for those people who are, are in debt and they don't know which way to turn. There's always a solution to the problem, always, always, always. And the problem being, it's the people you owe the money to, the banks and the financial institutions and things like that, it's their problem. They have to get the money off you. And if you haven't got the money to pay, you don't go to prison nowadays for debt. Don't be afraid of debt. Don't stick your head in the sand because of debt. Sort it out. It can be done. As I say, I've helped and advised many people with regard to which way they can go with regard to debts and, and bankruptcy, not to be afraid of bankruptcy. It's a horrible word. It's a horrible thing. But Donald Trump, one of the wealthiest guys in the world, has been bankrupt four times. I remember one person saying to me, I thought it was only wealthy people who went bankrupt. So, <laughs> I'm not saying for people to go bankrupt. I'm not saying people to to ignore their responsibilities as far as debts are concerned. But if you've ended up in a situation that's sort of no fault of your own, like me with the divorce, and you get put into this situation, there is always a way out. There is always options. Okay, the options are never really in your favor, but there are options. You can 
regain your life and you can make your life better. Here I am now, 20 years past when I started my bankruptcy. I'm living in Thailand, retired, and retired and living the dream, and that's where I am. I live in a beautiful house, and I'm actually buying this house at 61 years old, so it can be done. I am driving around in a, in a nice car. My life is far, far better here in Thailand than it ever, ever would be in England. You can also buy a basic house here for £22,000. I mean, what could you get in the UK, America or Australia for £22,000? It's just un unreal. So don't be afraid of restarting again in another country because this country here, they've got it right. Everything is far cheaper to live here. If you've got a little bit of income, then you can live a lovely lifestyle here and you don't need an awful lot of money. You need an awful lot less to live here than you do in the UK. So that's my little video on bankruptcy um, and the reasons why I discussed the bankruptcy. And I hope people can learn from this. And if you've got a problem, send me a, an email down below and I can maybe point you in the right direction or even give you some support with regard to it's not as bad as you think it is. There are always ways and means around everything in life. So from Les, be tired of living the dream. Till the next video, bye for now.